Well, hello. Uh, as you know, May is National Mental Health Awareness Month, and I wanted to just take a moment and share with you my struggle with mental health, specifically uh, depression and anxiety. So I remember sitting in the General's Hospital. It was about 2002. And I remember thinking to myself, what's there to be happy about? I looked around and I saw other people smiling and why are they so happy? As I think back to that time, it was like I had dark glasses on and everything seemed so bleak. Now, before I went back to see the doctor, they gave me this little quiz to take and it asked questions like, do you have a loss of interest in usual things? Yeah. The feelings of hopelessness and worthlessness? Yes. Weight gain or weight loss? I had lost 20 pounds because I was so anxious and filled with fear. Sleep disturbance? Yeah. It's like I could get a bunch of sleep, but no matter what, I still felt tired. So I finished the test and handed it into the smiling ladies. And I looked around and again, everything at the time just seemed so bleak. I remember thinking to myself, will I ever feel better? I could relate to the person who said, my life is so filled with sorrow. I don't know if I can face tomorrow. So I heard a knock on the door and it was the doctor and the doctor came in and looked over the paper and then she dropped the bombshell. She said, Pastor Larson, you're severely depressed. I remember thinking to myself, I can't be, I'm a pastor. We're not supposed to have any problems. So what was unique is not only was I battling depression, but I was also battling the shame, the stigma of having a depre depression. Because again, I'm a pastor. We're supposed to have it all together. But you know what? She was right. I was depressed. In fact, I remember feeling like I was trapped in a, a sunless garden where the, where the flowers were all dead. I remember at times my two-year-old son Dalton would come into the room at two in the afternoon, I was still in bed, and he'd say, Da, sleepy, da, get up. I didn't want to get up because to get up meant that I would have to face the day, and I didn't want to. Now, during my depression, I tended to isolate myself. And I remember coming to church and wanting to get in and out as fast as I could. And I figured, well, being a pastor and isolating yourself, that's not good. So, Maybe ministry isn't for me, and I decided to quit. And I applied at this place in Rochester, and they hired me on the spot. And I remember thinking to myself, yes, I finally get to have a normal life. No more Sundays, weekends off. But then one day it hit me. Steve, when you start running from your problems, when will you stop? I wanted to quit, I did, but God had other plans. And I still remember that drive in the car with my mom and dad. My dad and I were going to get my mom and what all the rational arguments couldn't do, God did. Because I still remember his presence. I felt enveloped in his presence. And I remember him saying, Steve, if you quit, you're going to regret this. You're going to regret this the rest of your life if you quit. And I can't explain it because before I got in the car, I was bent on quitting. I was looking forward to it. But after that drive with the Lord, I knew I couldn't quit. And 21 years later, I'm so glad that I didn't quit. And, you know, one of the big lessons is that when you're depressed, don't make a major decision. Man, I would have missed out on so much. When you, If you're depressed, don't make a major decision. You know, I can, I can, I've battled with depression as long back as I can remember. In fact, one time I remember I was a junior in high school and I was going through a, a difficult time in my life. And I remember uh, driving by a tree and I thought to myself, you know, if I just run the car into that tree, my pain will be over. But thank the Lord that I didn't give in to that thought, that I didn't 
give in to that feeling. I'm so glad. And I just want to say that if you're thinking of ending your life, if you're thinking of quitting, please don't do it. Please talk to someone. Please get help. You know, one of the most healing things for me was when I realized that I wasn't alone. In fact, during that depression episode in 2002, I remember going to the Rochester Public Library and I came across this this tape. Do you remember, remember when we used to have cassette tapes? And it was a, a person talking about their anxiety and depression. And on the back of the tape was a testimony from a pastor who had dealt with depression. I remember how therapeutic it was to me to realize I'm not alone. And I wanted to share my story today to share with you that you're not alone. In fact, you know, as I did my research, one of the things that I found is that there were many famous people who wrestled with depression. For example, Mother Teresa said, I am told that God loves me, and yet the reality of darkness and coldness and emptiness is so great that nothing touches my soul. Yes, Mother Teresa dealt with depression. You know, one of my uh, role models is Abraham Lincoln, and Abraham Lincoln dealt with depression. In fact, look at this. He says, I am now the most miserable man living. If what I feel were equally distributed to the whole human family, there would not be one cheerful face on earth. Whether I shall ever be better, I cannot tell. I awfully forebode I shall not. I must die or be better, it appears. That was Abraham Lincoln, who's considered by many people the greatest president we've ever had. Charles Spurgeon was this amazing pastor, and he says, My success appalled me, and the thought of the career which it seemed to open up so far from elating me cast me into the lowest depth out of which I Utterly, I uttered my misery. So even someone like Charles Spurgeon dealt with depression. Or I think about Elijah, the great prophet Elijah. It says this in 1 Kings, While he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom brush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I've had enough, Lord, he said, take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Friends, if you're wrestling with depression today, I just want to let you know, you are not alone. Don't give up. Lean upon the Lord. See, it's okay not to be okay. Just don't be not okay alone. Talk to someone. Go get help. Since my bout with depression in 2002, I, I've really been on a search and a journey to collect tools that will help me to experience better mental health and spiritual well-being. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making some videos coming up that will share with you some of those tools that I've learned to um, experience better mental health and spiritual well-being. So please subscribe to our channel so that you're made aware of these videos when they come out. Thank you and God bless.